As I always say, the break is one of the most important shots you're gonna play in every single frame of Paul. It's the, it's the shot that sets the tone for the frame. And the power break is something that a lot of us really struggle with. Being able to generate as much power as you need to be able to split them far and wide isn't that easy for some of us. I mean, if you've already got a cue action like a Chris Melling or a Craig Marsh or a Jack Whelan, a really beautiful long cue action where you can drive through the ball and, and really spread them far and wide, then you don't really need to change anything. You can just stay within your normal cue action and just hit it firm and solid. But if you're like me and you've got a fairly short cue action, almost a pecky cue action, one that is just not gonna generate the power you need for, for big, powerful splits all the time. So I think there's a few things we can do to adjust our technique to be more powerful. And there's three main fundamentals that I change when I'm looking to generate a much more powerful break. First thing I look to do is, is where I put, place my feet. So if on a normal shot, I'll be quite square on, so left leg just in front of the right leg, but my chest and my body is square on to my shot here, and I'm down on the shot, and that allows me to go back. Well, what I tend to do for the break, I'll go a little bit more side on, so I will have the, the left leg now quite a bit in front of my right leg. I've turned my whole body, I've tilted it round almost to a 45 degree angle, and that just opens up my, my chest, which allows me to get my cue arm back much further, a much bigger sensation of being able to go back further with my cue arm. If I stay square on, then I feel like there's a limitation for me because of my technique that doesn't allow me to go back as far as I want to for a break. So if I go a little bit more side on, I can just get that sensation of the cue arm going back much further, much easier. There's less resistance to be able to do so. The second thing I do with the break is I have a real, there's always a sensation that I want my head to move on the shot. I want my head to jump up on the shot when I'm trying to really hit. When you go back to try and hit it really hard, you're almost jumping, trying to get that head and everything follows the head. So, and I've always talked about trying to keep the head as still as possible on the shot to make sure you get good quality of contact on the cue ball. So what I do is I will, rather than having my cue, my head on the cue, right on the cue, I will raise my head up. So my head is say a few inches above the cue so somewhere here, so I've got that little bit more clearance. So instead, it won't give me the sensation of wanting to jump up because I'm almost in a, a bit more of an upright position already. I'll still really focus on keeping my head still, but just giving myself that little bit of clearance just allows me to almost feel like I'm in a more athletic and powerful position to be able to hit that break. And the third thing I do, and probably the biggest fundamental difference I have on the break shot to any other shot, is the sensation of really following through on the shot. So on a normal shot, I would probably look to follow through to a certain point, maybe somewhere there. So we are going past the cue ball, but we're not going miles past the cue ball. When we go back for the big powerful break, if we only allow the cue to come through, you know, a few inches past the cue ball, then we are almost decelerating at moment of impact. We've already lost some of our power. So what I try to do is I really try to, to exaggerate the follow through. I want to feel like my cue is really driving through, almost like I'm trying to reach the pack with my cue. And that will mean that when I'm striking the cue ball, I'm striking the cue ball at extreme, at the moment of extreme acceleration and extreme power. Uh, and that means I'm gonna get much more power going through the pack. You never actually reach the pack with your cue. You just want that sensation of really getting through the pack. Now let's see if I can put those three fundamentals together and really develop and drive a, a massive break. So more side on, head just above the cue and really accentuate and, and, and exaggerate that follow through. Well, there you go, really powerful break, really happy with that. I caught the cue ball so solid because I kept my head still, I was able to still maintain that, that quality of contact. I had the sensation of really driving through the pack and generating a big split. I've made a couple of balls, I've spread them far and wide, and I've given myself a great opportunity to make a clearance. So if you're struggling with your break and you're looking for ways to improve or, or increase the power on your break, then experiment with some of these fundamentals and see if any of these can really help you uh, and your break and generate more power on your break.
Comment below, I'd love to hear from you. Do you do any of these things? Has any of these techniques helped you in any way? I'd love to hear from you if you don't use any of these techniques or there's other things that you look to do. I'm always looking to hear from different people and different ways that people play this game because there are so many different ways to do it. And of course, if you've enjoyed the video, then please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. I've got plenty more content on the way and I'll catch you next time.